What's up everybody? Welcome back to Mohawk Motors. My name is Jason. So I've got the Ass Blazer back in the garage. I have another little upgrade that I want to make while I'm still driving it. Uh, I'm not ready to swap the engine and transmission yet. But I do want to get this upgrade done now because it'll just make it a little bit simpler when it comes time to, to swap the engine and transmission out of this thing. So what I have here is an electric fan conversion kit. To my knowledge, nothing in the GMT 360 platform came with electric fans. They all had mechanical fans, no matter which engine, no matter which options, no matter which package, they all came with a mechanical engine driven fan. Well, I want to make a little bit more room in front of the engine and I really like having the customizability and tuneability of electric fans, especially a dual electric fan setup like I'm going to be putting in. It allows me to control when my fans come on and off, when my fans are in high speed or low speed, uh, it really gives me a lot more control over the operating temperature of the engine. So we're going to get electric fans installed. This is a dual fan kit. I got this from PCM of NC. Uh, if you've never heard of them, but you're doing some upgrades on your Trailblazer or anything on the GMT 360 platform, uh, these guys kind of seem to have the market cornered. Uh, nobody else is really, at least nobody else that I can find, is really making the stuff for this platform that they are. And I think for what they offer, their prices are pretty fair. So I ordered up their wire harness electric fan conversion kit. And they do sell the fans also. The kit calls for just a set of stock electric fans from a uh, fourth gen F body, like a 98 to 2002 Camaro or Firebird. It was cheaper to buy the fans from Rock Auto than it was to buy them through PCM of M NC. So I just ordered my fans from Rock Auto, got the wire harness kit from PCM of NC, and uh, we're gonna try to get this thing installed. Okay, now the nice thing about this kit is it does come with instructions, and they're pretty thorough. The first thing the instructions say to do is remove the upper radiator hose. Not remove, but disconnect it from the radiator and fold it back out of your way. Remove the mechanical fan, and then remove the fan shroud. We're not going to need those anymore, so first step is get the old stuff out of the way, right? Five minutes later. All right, so I got the mechanical fan off the water pump. I did remove the serpentine belt because I needed to hold the water pump pulley still so I could get the fan off of it. I removed my intake tube to give myself a little more space to work. And I also took the PCM out of the PCM holder right here and just laid it back up out of my way. That gave me a little bit more space and made it a little easier to get the stock stuff out. Now the instructions say, next step is to test fit the electric fans. So they more or less drop down into place. Uh, on mine, they really only fit uh, it, it pretty much exactly right in one spot. There's a the transmission lines, the transmission cooler lines on this side are right against the outside of the fan over here. And on this side, the uh, part of the PCM mount is right against the fan. So it, I mean, it more or less kind of holds it right there in place. Now from the factory, the radiator has two mounting points down on the bottom tank that we're going to be drilling some holes through our new electric fan shroud to mount using those holes. And then the upper parts get mounted with some brackets. We'll get to that in a minute. First, I want to double, triple check, make sure that this is exactly where I want the fan. 
and then I'll make some marks and drill those holes. All right, so the instructions say, you know, test fit, make sure it lines up on mine. Now this is the bottom of the fan where it's gonna sit onto those mounting points that are made on the radiator tank from the factory. Now, mine just happened to work out that the little nut clips they provide, I drilled the hole as far in as the nut clips would allow, slid the nut clips over on both ends, and that lines up with the mounting holes. Now the instructions do say that won't always be the case. You may need to trim a little bit off of this edge to get them to line up. But in my case, I didn't have to do that. So it's kind of nice that it, it almost worked out perfectly for me. I have to imagine most of them are like that. So I'm gonna get the bottom bolted in and then the instructions say, once you have your bottom loosely bolted, then you can measure and line up for your top brackets. So we'll do that next. 11 minutes later. Okay, update. I've got the fan mounted. Now the bottom bolts, they are tough to get to, but you can get to them by reaching your hand down and around. The upper bolts use just the stock fan shroud mounting points, so those are easy. So I've got those installed. Fan is nice and secure, it's not going anywhere. The instructions say next thing to do is get the wiring harness installed. Now, the main power supply to the harness goes right on the main power supply right here. The main ground goes over here. And then I need to run two wires into the PCM because that's gonna be the control wires for the relays. 20 minutes later. All right, so I've got it installed. The physical work, let me show you. Fans are mounted, wire harness is run. The wire harness is super simple. It's just one plug into this motor, one plug into this motor. There's two plugs into the little control box here. Now, this is super, super, super important. They don't make it, in my opinion, stand out enough in the instructions. But this bottom connector that goes into the little control relay pack, you absolutely have got to plug that connector in before you bolt the control pack and the mounting bracket to the fan shroud because the plug will not fit into the connector once it is attached to the fans uh, and you're gonna have to take it back apart, which is a hassle. There's another connector over on this side. Then you've got your main power just comes off the main power source, a ground over here to the inside of the fender, and then there's a little two plug connector or two wire connector over here that you, they give you the pigtail end with the PCM pins on the end of it, and you just add those to your PCM harness or to your PCM connectors rather. The green wire goes into spot 42 on the blue connector, and the blue wire goes in spot 33 on the green connector. So it's physically installed. Bolted in, wired up, should be good to go. I'm gonna put everything else that I took apart back together, and then when I have time, I'll have to do the actual PCM programming portion of it, because this PCM it doesn't know that it has electric fans or how to control electric fans. So I'm going to have to use HP tuners to go in and do that. A little longer than a few minutes later. All right, there we go. Air filter and intake tube all back in place. Serpentine belt back on. PCM mounted. Fuse box cover plugged back on. Everything where it goes. All that's left to do is go in and make the changes I need to in the PCM so it can control these fans. Okay, so I need to go in and update the computer. Tell it that now you have electric fans. So I got the ignition on. Now 
There it reads. There we go. Read entire and go. There we go. So now I need to save this file. There we go. All right, now I can do my changes. So the first thing I'm gonna do is just remove vats. I'm gonna need to do that anyway. So that's really easy. And the next thing I need is fans. So now I need to change my fan type to two fans. Now that lets everything know, okay, we're not working with the old fan. Now we're working with two electric fans. So now I can adjust when those fans come on, when those fans come off. And obviously I want to adjust these a little bit because these are all maxed out and I really don't want that. So my first stage, which is going to be my low speed, uh, it runs at 210. So I want my first stage to come on at 210. And then I want my first stage to turn off at 200. And now the enable AC pressure, disable AC pressure. I'm going to need to read uh, and see what that should be. Actually, let me open a compare file here. What do I have in here? I'm basically just going to make this all the same as uh, what a Camaro would be with their electric fans. Okay, so that should have it. Now this should make my fans work, come on and off when I need them to, and uh, pretty much be it. So now I'm going to save this file, and then I'm going to write it. I need to write the entire. I'm plugged in, I've got good battery voltage, I shouldn't have any issues. Right and tire. And now I just sit here and wait. There we go. Right completed. So now I can close that. Now I should be able to open up the VCM scanner. So now here in the VCM scanner, I should be able to connect to the vehicle, go into the vehicle controls. In the fans, I should be able to, well, if my wiring is correct, I should be able to turn the fans on from here. And that sounds like low speed fans, and that sounds like high speed fans. Back to low speed, back to off. So, I know that they're wired correctly, and that portion is working right. So now the only thing to do is going to be start it up, let it get up to temperature, and see if they work. Okay, so I've got it running. We're almost up to 210. Uh, 210 should be when my lower speed uh, fans kick on, assuming I've done everything correctly. So let's hang out here. Once that engine coolant temperature hits 210, then the fan should come on. And there's 210. So now our low speed fans should be on if I did everything correctly. And they are. So this baby is good. Look at how quickly that dropped, brought down the coolant temperature. It's already dropping it back down again. That's awesome. All right, I'm calling that install complete. Seem to be working. I mean, I won't know for sure, but I'm going to give myself the benefit of the doubt that if I have the low speed working correctly, and I know that the computer can turn high and low speed on, that the high speed is also going to work if I ever get it that hot. So, I think we're golden. I think this is a this is a done deal. Well, there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. We now have electric fans in the Ass Blazer. 
Uh, I'm really happy about the amount of space that freed up in front of the engine. Look at all this floor space. So much, the aerobics in there, so many activities. Now that's gonna come in handy down the road. And uh, you know, it's also now that mechanical fan isn't gonna be dragging on the engine. And it gives me more control, more customization, uh, and more ability to really have my hands on every aspect that is happening once I get the LS1 swapped into this thing and do some tuning on it. So I'm really happy. The PCM of NC kit, I mean, it's a pretty good kit. My only complaint is that they didn't make a bigger deal that you needed to plug that plug in before you put it all together because uh, that was a pain. I didn't do that. I had to take it all the way apart and then put it back together again. But other than that, pretty good kit. Not cheap, but I think worthwhile in this case. But uh, that's it for this video. One more upgrade done. Pretty excited about it. And I think that puts this thing... I haven't thought of anything else that I want to do to it before I do the drivetrain swap, the engine and transmission. So might just be time to drive it and have fun with it, minus second gear, until I have the engine and transmission ready to go in. Thanks so much for watching, everybody. I hope you enjoyed. I hope this helps if you're trying to convert your uh, GMT 360, whatever it may be, to an electric fan setup as well. And until the next video, take care.